Hi everyone, my name is Tandila Sheikh. I'm a correspondent at Exchange for Media. We are here with Sundar Bala Subramaniam, the CMO, actually the newest CMO at Mintra, the most loving e-commerce platform. And we wanted to have a, an exclusive chat about, you know, what is this plan for the company and how they are going about, you know, cutting through the clutter of the D2C platforms. So Sundar, my first question is about, you know, how you are cutting through the D2C clutter and the, you know, the emergence of a lot of e-commerce platforms right now. Well, a good evening and thank you for uh, chatting with Mintra. Uh, I, I think it's an interesting point you raise about more and more choices coming for the consumer. Uh, and if you look back uh, and, and you kind of step back, I think the larger role that we're trying to do is democratize fashion for consumers in the country. Uh, one part of that is how do you enable more and more consumers to be able to buy branded fashion versus unbranded fashion. Uh, and in that mm -hmm. large mission and in that large journey, I honestly believe that if there are more and more players who come there, it will be beneficial for the consumer. So I think that's a one starting point that I think we should acknowledge uh, that it's good for uh, this evolution if there are more people. As they say, it takes a village to raise a child uh, in that yeah. respect, right? Uh, for us specifically, uh, what we want to do, and I think what Mintra has been successfully doing uh, over the many years, uh, is look at every different consumer cohort uh, and understand what their needs are from fashion and provide them a few things and do it consistently, right? One is just a certain width of selection that is unparalleled. Uh, Mintra today offers, you know, over 1.7 million styles uh, on the fashion front, which is amazing given our breadth uh, and width of this country. Second mm -hmm. is to go deep within this. There are mm -hmm. so many different categories that are important within the fashion uh, world uh, and we cater to all of them. Uh, some examples of them are international brands. There are D2C brands, as you spoke about. There are domestic brands. Uh, there's workwear, ethnic wear. Uh, Gen Z, which is a, a you know whole uh, new cohort. Uh, our ability to provide collection for all of them is important. Make it available at the price points they need is important. Uh, but I think the most important of them all is how do you allow for a customer experience that is unparalleled. When they come and shop on Mintra, the ability to discover the latest styles and trends, ability to zoom in on something that is customized to their requirement and need, and then of course be able to buy it and get a post-purchase service, which is also unparalleled, is something I think, uh, you know, uh, what we hold very, very dearly. Uh, so for Mintra, when we set out and say we want to enable consumers to look their stylish best every day, uh, these are the key tenets and we'll continue to build on those pieces every year. So, uh, I mean, I wanted to understand, you know, since all the brands are having their own platforms now, how is Mintra helping them in order to, you know, gain more or reach to more consumers? My point towards D2C platforms was this, because every brand is coming up with their own websites. Every brand wants to reach to the consumer directly. So, but still Mintra is doing really well with their, you know, sort of uh, providing a platform to these uh, brands to reach out to consumers. So how are, how are you able to do that? Uh, I think, you know, what Mintra has been able to do over the years is get a user base that is very, very engaged on the app. Uh, and a lot of that engagement comes out through the whole selection piece, through our user interface, which I would think is best in class, uh, to be honest here. And also what we have is properties that drive that engagement. One example of that on the social commerce side is what we have, which is, you know, M Studio and M Live, where we have influencers who come on and aid shoppers in their journey. They talk about brands, they talk about styles, they talk about what will work best for you know, uh, different body types, et cetera. So when th that level of engagement happens, users and customers keep coming back. And I think brands understand and appreciate that. Uh, for example, our, uh, you know, in social commerce, our M Live is one of the most sought after uh, 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 properties that brands want to latch on to talk about what they have to offer to consumers in the country. 
so I think that part of it is what differentiates uh, Mintra, uh, something that we've been honing over the years. Absolutely. So moving on to the next question, you know, um, uh, Mintra, I have been seeing and personally been purchasing from Mintra and I have been seeing uh, uh, your marketing strategies. You involve a lot of influencers, right? When it comes to, you know, going about marketing, because I remember that was this uh, born on Instagram, which was also been, uh, you know, taken by Mintra. So I wanted to understand that, you know, uh, 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 there is a lot of conversation about influencers losing their credibility as a platform you know as the platform that supports influencers with live commerce how are you leveraging with this kind of marketing and you know how do you go about keeping the cred credibility amongst your consumers when it comes to influence marketing got it so a first of all thank you for being a customer of mintra as you said mm -hmm. uh, 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 on that uh, note uh, the way we look at for each customer or consumer who comes on to our platform what I think they seek is a very authentic relationship uh, with both the fashion brands that they uh, buy into and Mintra uh, in terms of the place where uh, they buy. Uh, and that authenticity translates in different ways. Uh, if you step back, if you see, I know you spoke about influencers, but we also use celebrities, right? Because for certain customer cohorts, that sense of authenticity comes from I, I want to see what my favorite movie stars are wearing and which brands they're associated with. Uh, and that's the inspiration for them for fashion. For some mm -hmm. other customer cohorts, their sense of inspiration and authenticity comes from influencers that they follow on social media. Uh, and I think we kind of, depending on the cohort, uh, we would utilize uh, the respective one. On our platform, uh, the role that influencers play on the social commerce piece uh, is to kind of aid shoppers in this process. What are the different styles? What is most suitable for each person and individuality? What are the latest trends? What are the new brands that have come on? So I, the way we see it is that these influencers on our platform are almost aids to the customers who come there and help make their shopping easier. Uh, and when that role is defined that way, I think it's quite easy for customers to see that, uh, believe in it. And the very fact that, you know, we have seen our traffic per live session continuously increase over the uh, months that we've done it uh, is testament to that they see value in it. So that's how uh, we kind of utilize influencers on our platform. Absolutely. Uh, moving on, you also spoke about initially in the first question about Gen Z cohort. You know, there is a lot of conversation in marketers as to they are not able to understand this Gen Z cohort altogether. But, you know, being on Mintra and, uh, you know, seeing personally Mintra's journey, you have been a very, uh, I, I mean, you have been a part of conversation in the Gen Z cohort as well. So how do you keep up with that? What is your mantra to, you know, be a relevant or a relatable brand to the Gen Z cohort. Got it. So I think honestly, as a marketeer, we go through this with every cohort. Uh, when millennials got defined, we had similar, uh, uh, you know, problems of how do we really understand them. Uh, I think Gen Z, of course, as a cohort, uh, will are and will continue to play a very important role uh, across for all brands of all sizes. Uh, they are a cohort that are more uniform across the world uh, that we've ever seen. Uh, and it's very, very important to kind of untap them. Uh, they are a cohort who are exceedingly fluid, uh, right? Uh, they, While they may be rooted in India, they have one eye out on what's happening around the world. So it's very important to tap into that aspiration of theirs. Uh, they, while they want edgy fashion, uh, they will also want it in value and price points that work for them. So there is that dichotomy that, you know, you kind of work with. Uh, over the years, what we've seen is that as long as you keep understanding their different needs and wants, and you're able to marry that with the service that we can provide, uh, it's kind of a match made in heaven. Uh, we've been very lucky and fortunate to have a very, very strong part of our business come from the Gen Z cohort who come back and stick with us. 
Uh, this is a cohort that normally is not very sticky. They are very flirty in their choices. Uh, but because we've been able to evolve our offering to them in the right way, uh, we've managed that stickiness. Uh, they also look for authenticity. Uh, and I think that's where our social commerce piece comes in. We've been able to offer that authenticity without being very pushy. Uh, they relate to it and they find value in it. Which Absolutely. And um, uh, I wanted to ask that, you know, uh, Mintra has been doing a lot of associations with celebrities um, in the last one year, uh, as, as I have been noticing. And, you know, you have been experimenting a lot with different sort of celebrities, be it Virat Kohli, be it Anushka Sharma, be it with Tiara Armani or some others, you know. So how, like, what is your marketing mantra this year? And, you know, how are you going to leverage more on this kind of associations? Yeah. So I, I think, I mean, more than a marketing mantra, you know, as I'd like to say it, what's the consumer mantra, right? Uh, what they look for when they think about fashion. And this is, again, for me, it's been three months and it's a, it's a, it's a big learning for me is uh, it, it, it's a category that demands and requires a lot of inspiration, right? And when you ask people and consumers about how they make their fashion choices, uh, a very interesting starting point is what is my favorite celebrity wearing uh, and what brands are he or she associated with. Uh, I have not seen this strong a link between uh, you know, celebrities and a category as much as there is for fashion. Uh, and that's where that match comes in. That That's what consumers are looking for. Uh, we will therefore use celebrities uh, to kind of talk about what we have to offer. For example, in our latest campaign, Be Extraordinary Every Day, the insight was a very simple one. Indians everywhere said, I don't want to look my stylish best only on the big occasions. I want to look my stylish best every day. Uh, and for us to enable that and talk about branded daily fashion wear, uh, you know, we've kind of used Ranveer and Kiara and Vijay Devrakonda and Tamanna to bring out those stories uh, for us. Uh, so that it comes from a consumer need uh, more than you know a celebrity strategy, if I could say it that way. So my second question was, what is your marketing mantra this year? Like, what is that? What are the three main strategies that Mitra is going to use in order to you know maybe double the size of consumers that you are reaching? Yeah. So I, I think the good part is Mintra has been able to do this over the years. So I don't have to uh, redefine things uh, in that sense. Uh, what Mintra, the framework that Mintra uses is to continuously unlock more and more different growth opportunities, right? Uh, one example of the growth opportunity that I spoke about is branded daily fashion wear. How do I look stylish every day? Uh, and the, those are the kind of pieces that I think we will continuously be on the lookout for to figure out what works for different cohorts, what worked for you know the metro versus the non-metro versus the Gen Z. Uh, another example of you know a growth opportunity is workwear. Ever since this has opened up, obviously workwear has increased, but now there is a much more uh, you know the the workwear is much more casual than it ever was, uh, and we are seeing like a hundred percent growth on casual workwear than we've ever seen. So how do you tap into those opportunities? Uh, so for us, if there is a marketing mantra, it is to always be in sync with what the consumer is doing. Uh, because if we take the eye of the ball there, uh, then we're not going to be able to serve them. Uh, so that's the Uber piece. Uh, but outside of tapping into their needs and wants, uh, tapping into trends, be it social media related, be it commerce related, uh, I really believe commerce and content as a large bucket is going to be the future, uh, both from a fashion perspective or even otherwise. Uh, Gen Z and how do you build on them? Because again, big, uh, big part of not just today, but future for each of yeah. these businesses. And how do we fashion and build our brands that way is what's important. Uh, as we do this on the fashion side, we also, again, got a learning that is not 
the a big part of looking good is not only about what i wear but also about what other products i use so which is where the cooking category comes in uh, and that's something that we've been kind of doubling down on in the recent months uh, and we've done a lot of work there including a campaign there with uh, and that part of it is also something that we believe that across both fashion and beauty we mm-hmm. will enable indians to look their stylish best absolutely um uh... Sundar, I had one or two questions more about you know understanding what the platform is doing. Is that you know, uh, in one of the in one of your interviews also, you also like like um there was a very big uh conversation about tier two and tier three cities becoming like uh, making fifty percent more than fifty percent of your business. If I'm not wrong, so uh and we have been hearing the Bharat region, specifically the Bharat region becoming. you know uh, the more hot beds or how do i see deep pocket regions when it comes to you know making business or when it comes to churning out the revenue from these these regions how are you seeing uh, you know how how is fashion or the lifestyle segment seeing these two or these uh, these tier two tier three cities as you know as deeper pockets or as as very important part of their you know consumer outreach and how are you going to capitalize more on them yeah uh, i think for mintra we've always had a very broad based approach to consumer cohorts across the country right uh, we get more than 45% of our booty at three already uh, so it is a very big chunk and an important chunk for us already uh, not depending any current growth rates or not uh, we've always and for us i think the mantra has always been what is important for them uh, again from a fashion style perspective uh, indian and ethnic wear also becomes more more and more important over there uh, one classic example is through last year we added between 30 to 50k styles per month on indian wear uh, just as much as we are seeing gen z grow also in tier 2 tier 3 we're seeing lengas grow by 60% yeah right so you, that's the beauty of i think fashion that it's not about one specific trend everyone has a different persona of fashion depending on the context that they are in uh, and what mintra does is make sure that across categories and price points we are able to match that uh, what we also need to kind of make sure that consumers have trust on is our po- is the post purchase piece mm, absolutely and why how soon will i get it uh, mm. and if i get it how do i make sure that if there is something wrong uh, how do i get an exchange for it and those are pieces that i think we are uh, quite honestly industry leading on uh, and that's enabled us to build trust amongst all consumer cohorts that when i buy something from mintra uh, it will be something that i can use so do you do you uh, approach uh, a different marketing strategy to reach out to these uh, consumers uh, hailing from tai to their three cities so it gets customized to what each of them look for right if i had to loosely break it down to let's take an example of our uh, influencer strategy that we spoke about some time back uh, you know the influencers that i would use for gen z uh, would probably be different from whom i would use for ethnics uh, who i would use different for in the south versus the north uh, because each of these is customized to the sense certain sense of fashion and beauty within those cohorts uh, so we customize it to that cohort but the principle of providing them the widest and the deepest selection at the price points they want with the customer experience that they seek for remains our holy grail Uh, that's something we will offer everyone it just gets customized to their need uh, not only in terms of marketing approach but even customized from an app experience when you open the app and there is a customer sitting in bareilly versus someone sitting in salem uh, they will see an interface that is customized to them uh, based as uh, you know their behavior in the past and i think that part of it kind of is the biggest unlock that uh, mintra as a brand uh, quite honestly does really really well which is why we get the kind of uh, loyalty and engagement that we do 
Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, great insight about the tier two, tier three cities. Uh, I also wanted to understand. You know, um, Mintra has been very exper experimental when it comes to you know experimenting with the platform itself. Uh, be it you know uh, consumers trying on clothes to trying on glasses to you know uh, get into AR, VR technology, or if I'm not wrong, metaverse also. I think you have tried. So, uh, what are the new innovations you guys are working on in the future, or maybe in the coming months that we are going to see? Yeah, I mean, uh, I I don't think I can comment about what's coming in the future, but uh, I think <laughs> let, let me talk about uh, at least our approach right now. Uh, I think it's very important for customers in this journey to be able to a discover what they want. A uh, big part of fashion is size and fit. Uh, and how does it work? And we have a size fit algorithm that ensures that when you choose a T-shirt, for example, we will show up the size that is most suited for you, bases your previous purchases. Uh, and that's a very important part of you know allowing a person to make sure it works for them. Uh, when someone looks at a social commerce like uh, and sees, for example, an influencer or a model there wearing a certain shirt, and they want to kind of like and they click on that shirt. Not only will we give them details of that shirt, but if they like the overall look of the model, including you know the jacket the person's wearing or the trousers that she's wearing, then we allow them to shop the whole look also. So these are parts of how technology is enabling and making the shopping process so much more simpler for them. On the beauty side, uh, we have a couple of very interesting pieces. There is a AI-based skin analyzer feature where you take a selfie and bases that you know, it kind of analyzes your different uh, uh, skin tone and features, and it throws up products and points that are beneficial for you. Uh, what we've seen are customers not only using that as a feature, but also buying the brands and products and coming back and repeating those, which means that it's it, it's something that actually works for them. Uh, for us to build more and more of these. Uh, is so yeah. In the future, what are we? What are the technologies that you are going to, you know, experiment with? Is there something new that you're going to come up with? <laughs> I wish I could talk about it, but the tech team keeps things so secretive yeah. that you know I don't even think I would know what they are. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but I think what's important is that when we look at technology, it's about technology that people across the country can adopt. Right? Yeah. It needs yeah. to be things that are scalable and simple. Uh, yeah. Let's take image search. And I think that's a real unlock. When we see people around us and we kind of like what they're wearing, or if you're leafing through uh, you know, something on social media or you know, a magazine and you find something that your, celebrity, your favorite celebrity is wearing, image search allows you to take a photo of that, put it up on the app, and we will automatically show you the products that match that. Right? Uh, it's sounds very simple as a technology but to me something like this is so much more scalable and usable for people and we've seen evidence of it so that part of it from a technology is important that uh, not only does it provide a benefit but it should be scalable in a format that works across the country uh, and that's really the focus uh, on what's new honestly the minute i find out i'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> okay i just have two more questions to go one is the talk of the hour uh women's day is going to hit us on 8th of march and uh, you know a lot of brands uh make this hooligan about you know women's day they create offers around women's day but then somewhere or the other they sound really forced you know because they are just coming up with offers at that specific day and a lot of people have that problem also that you know women's day aata hai to ye sare brands offer karne aa jate hain so as a marketer you know with such a such an immense experience working with different brands and now working at a very elitist lifestyle um, platform what what is your suggestion to to marketers or to brands out there to you know uh, leverage such occasions but at the same time not sound too forcible or how do i say to um, you know hooligan about it got it so couple of points so a uh, i'd like to point out that we are not an elitist platform but we are a very mass for <laughs> 
platform for Indians ac all across uh, in terms of what we provide uh, from a fashion and beauty perspective. I think your point, which you spoke about, is uh, about occasions, right? And there are many occasions. You spoke about Women's Day. There are festivals in the country. There are many occasions that come up, and occasions tend to become points of consumption, which a lot of brands ride on, right? And of course, there is a commercial angle to it. Yeah. I think from a longer term perspective, uh, the lens I would use is, are these opportunities for the brand to be truly more and more inclusive? right uh, and if that is something you can leverage and provide and become as a brand i think a the brand becomes better uh, serves a better purpose and for the target audience that you're talking to it's more important uh, so if let's take an example of women's day it's not about making one brand video for that day but it's about through the year how can you make sure that as an audience men women all kinds of other cohorts that we have in this country make sure that all of the it is inclusive in the brand offering that you have uh, and if that is a you know the larger piece you do uh, on specific occasions sure you can go put out the uh, you know uh, brand videos that you want to do uh, but i think as a brand builder i would take the lesson of inclusivity away from it and build that into uh, you know the philosophy of the brand Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the the point that you put forward about inclusivity, I think that is the top of the hour for many of the brands out there. Not just women. I think uh, when it comes to other genders like the LGBTQIA plus plus, there also there is a lot of talks about that as well. Uh, but uh, coming back to the conversation that we are having, my you know last question is about you know uh, what is the uh, what is going to be the focus of this year when it comes to the marketing spends by the company? Uh, is it going to be, so a lot of people are talking about, you know, digital uh, taking uh, the lead versus TV still being behind, whereas a lot of marketers are talking about TV still leading the way and digital is, uh, you know, following the footstep. So what is your like how 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 is your platform going to be uh, when it comes to that and you know what is your uh, bifurc bifurcation of uh, marketing as well as advertising spend if you could throw some light on sure yeah uh, i i think yeah. as an investment decision that's something that's always looked at right uh, that where do you kind of spend your money for it to be the most effective uh, and it goes back to again the consumer cohort right mm -hmm what will allow you as a brand to make an impact on that target audience um, yeah. there are certain cohorts in the country where tv will make more sense for the brand in the in one specific part of their life journey uh, in other places where your customer cohort spends in inordinate, inordinate amount of time only on digital then you only a digital uh, strategy over there. So I don't think it's about making choices between one versus the other. Uh, it will boil down to who are you reaching and therefore that automatically enables you to make that choice. Uh, if a brand is unclear about who they are going after, then it becomes a question of grappling A versus B. But I think when there is clarity of this is the cohort, this is what they require this is how the brand is able to provide a solution for them uh, it's quite simple to break down the mediums that we need to use to reach them and make choice so yes we use tv yes, we do. We do. We do. We do. influencers we do social commerce on the app yes we do uh, do we use notifications on our app yes we do uh, but this is catered to to different consumer cohorts uh, different customer that they are uh, in their engagement uh, cycle with us. Absolutely. So you're going to be using TV or digital more this year? Then, uh, as I said, there are there will be cohorts where I will use TG more. There will be cohorts. Let's take Gen Z as an example. I will use digital more for Gen Z, right? Uh, within digital, you can break it down to influencers versus you know your pushed video, uh, and there again you will see your certain cohorts come out where digital video makes more sense uh, or your ability to reach them is simple versus some other parts where influencers are better so it is it does get customized to each of them to each cohort we will we will 
have to make these choices. Absolutely. Okay, coming back. Uh, so, what is going to be the year for uh, Mintra, and what is going to be the mantra of Mintra this year? <laughs> so, uh, I I think uh, for us the mantra is uh, you know make more and more consumers in the uh, country. Uh, be their fashionable best, right? Uh, that's important for us. Uh, it is a journey that we are on. Uh, consumers want to buy more and more branded fashion. Uh, and I think therefore it is our duty to kind of help serve that to them. Uh, I think that's the larger piece. Within that, we will unlock some of these pieces. As I said, uh, international brands is big. Uh, consumers want it, uh, our job to kind of deliver that to them. Uh, uh, athleisure is big, our job to do that. Uh, finding personalized beauty is big uh, and is an ask from them. It's our job to do that. Uh, give it to them at the price points they want. Again, uh, those are the pieces that I think are the larger jobs to be done uh, to make sure that, again, in the end of the day, for them to feel comfortable making the choices that they are uh, to look their stylish best. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Sundar, for taking out time. And thank you very much, everyone who's watching the video till the end of it. And uh, I would like to say all the best for the coming uh, year. And uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Have a great day. Thank you so much, uh, Tanjila, both to you and to all your viewers. Uh, may we just say uh, we look forward to welcoming all of you on the Mintra app uh, and, you know, kind of allowing us to enable you to look your stylish best. Uh, thank you so much uh, for chatting with uh, Mitra. Thank you. Have a great day, Sundu. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.